Hi, welcome to Prime Recap. In order to restore her father's freedom, a fearless young woman becomes a prisoner in a cursed castle, home to magical creatures and a menacing looking beast. Today we will recap the story of the 2017 movie, Beauty and the Beast. Once upon a time, in the French countryside, there was a handsome young prince who lived in a luxurious castle. Although he possessed everything he desired, the prince was selfish and rude. He collected taxes from the people to fill his castle with the most beautiful objects and his parties with the most beautiful people. One day, during a celebration, while the guests are dancing to the music of Madame Garderobe and the Maestro Cadenza, a beggar woman enters the palace, seeking shelter from the storm. As a gift, she offered the prince a rose. However, disgusted by her ugliness, he ordered the woman to leave. The lady then advised him not to be deceived by appearances, for beauty lies within people. However, when the prince insisted on expelling her, the woman turned into a beautiful sorceress. Adam begged for forgiveness, but it was too late, as she realized that there was no love in his heart. As punishment, the sorceress turned him into a hideous beast. She then cast a spell on the castle and everyone inside. As the years passed, the prince and his servants were forgotten by everyone, as the sorceress erased people's memories. The rose she offered was enchanted. Therefore, if Adam learned to love someone and was reciprocated before the last petal fell, the spell would be broken. Otherwise, he would be doomed to be a beast for all eternity. As the years went by, Adam became desperate and lost hope of finding love, for he did not believe that anyone would be able to love a monster. Years later, Belle gets up in the morning to live exactly the same routine as every day in her small village. The girl was born in Paris, but was taken to the countryside when she was still a child. Belle cannot come to terms with the fact that absolutely everything and everyone is exactly the same since the day she arrived in that place. On the other hand, the other villagers are always watching the young woman. They find her strange because she has big dreams and an overwhelming desire to leave that village to live in the big city. Belle is the only one who goes to the local library and loves to read because this is the best way she has to visit various other corners of the world without having to travel. Despite criticizing her all the time, the truth is that those people are envious of her intelligence and daring, because the girl makes them realize how mediocre they are. The only one to recognize the young woman's greatness is Gaston, a former war soldier who intends to marry Belle, mainly because she is the most beautiful woman in the whole village. All the other unmarried young women in the village have a crush on Gaston, and this is all the more reason for him to ignore them. The man is so full of himself to think that Belle is the only one deserving of the position of being his wife. Gaston brings the girl a bouquet of flowers and invites her to dinner, but she refuses without a second thought. After the soldier is rejected, LeFou, his only and best friend, tries to console him, but this only increases Gaston's interest in Belle, because unlike all the other women, the young woman doesn't even think about pleasing him. When Belle arrives home, she meets her father and asks him if he thinks she is strange. Then Maurice tells her that once, in Paris, he met a girl very similar to Belle, who was also very ahead of her time. People made fun of her, until the day they started to imitate her. The girl the man was referring to was Belle's mother, who was also a bold and fearless woman. That afternoon, Maurice is preparing to go on a trip to buy new working tools. He is an inventor, and before he leaves, he asks his daughter what she would like to get. As with every year, Belle states that she would like her father to bring her a rose, and the man promises to do so. Even alone at home, Belle carries on with her normal activities and while waiting for her laundry to be done, she uses her book to teach a little girl to read. Belle is often criticized by the school principal for teaching girls to read, but she continues her mission to help them gain their freedom. When the young woman returns home, Gaston again tries to convince her to become his wife, but Belle assures him that she will never marry him. She can't imagine being next to an ignorant and completely superficial brute. For her, the intellectual counts for a lot when it comes to choosing someone to share her future with. Belle wants much more than a life in the countryside and is willing to do whatever it takes to be able to venture out into the world. That night, a storm covers the forest and Philippe, the horse, is startled to see a tree branch being destroyed by lightning, obstructing the passage. So the travelers decide to go their separate ways. Maurice finds it strange that the place is covered with snow, since it is almost summer in France. Suddenly, some wolves appear and they must flee. During the escape, the wagon breaks loose and Maurice is left behind. Just as he was about to be devoured, the man ends up slipping on the snow and falls directly on Philippe's back, who was below waiting for him. They keep running and go through a gate that has just opened. From there, the wolves dare not to go. Grateful to have been saved, Maurice decides to go and talk to the host who welcomed them and walks to the entrance of the castle. After going through the door, he hangs up his coat and goes to warm himself in front of the fireplace. At that moment, 
The man hears a noise coming from the kitchen and goes over there in the hope of finding some residence. But instead, Maurice comes across a banquet all to himself and sits down to eat. During the meal, he spots a talking cup and realizes he has gotten himself in trouble. Maurice then gets up and runs for the exit. He and Philippe were already near the gate when the inventor spots a bed of roses and decides to pick one of those flowers to take to his daughter. Just then, the beast, who had been watching the intruder all this time, appears and the horse runs away scared. Hours later, he manages to get to his house and Belle realizes that something is wrong. She asks Philippe to take her to her father and takes a piece of wood to defend herself before entering the castle. Upon seeing the beautiful young woman, Lumiere and Cogsworth become excited about the possibility that this is the woman who will break the curse. Belle hears the two whispering and moves closer to find out what is going on. Just then, she hears a noise coming from upstairs and goes there to look for her father. When she finds him, the man is locked behind bars and Maurice orders his daughter to leave. However, there is no time for that, for soon the beast appears and reveals that he has arrested that man because he stole a rose from his garden. Then, Belle reveals that she was the one who wanted the rose and asks the monster to lock her instead of her father. However, Maurice orders his daughter to go home and be happy, for he is old and she still has much to live for. Belle then says she will leave, but first she wishes to say goodbye to her father. Granting this last request, the beast opens the cell and, after hugging her father, Belle pushes him out, taking his place as a prisoner. The beast then takes the man away, and hours later the cell opens again. Lumiere appears and states that he will take the young woman to her room. At that moment, Belle is startled and throws a wooden stool at him. Then Cogsworth appears coming up the stairs, and the girl looks for another object to attack him with. Minutes later, she understands that those creatures mean her no harm and follows them to her new quarters. The candlestick states that Belle is free to go anywhere in the castle except the West Wing. When the young girl questions what is in there, Cogsworth states that that place is where the storeroom is. Upon meeting her new room, Belle is delighted and Lumiere states that her master wanted her to stay in the best room in the castle. The place was totally dusty, so Plumet shows up to clean it all up. She and Lumiere were a couple before the curse, and even after all they have been through, they are still in love. Suddenly, the closet starts singing and Madame Garderobe introduces herself. She quickly begins to dress her guest and gets help from her dog, Sultan, who because of the curse has been transformed into a stool. After all that work, Madame Garderobe decides to take a nap and Belle takes the opportunity to get rid of those clothes. The young woman opens the window looking for a way out, but realizes that the place is too high to jump. So she starts to make a plan to escape. Meanwhile, her father, Maurice, arrives at their village bar and asks for the villagers' help in rescuing his daughter. He tells them that Belle is trapped in a beast's castle, which is hidden in the middle of the forest. Everyone scoffs at the man, because they obviously don't believe his story, but Gaston offers to help him. They enter the woods in the middle of the night, but Maurice can't tell the right way. Then Gaston loses his temper and asks where Belle is. He believes the man is delusional and reveals that he only went to help him to get the girl's hand in marriage. Upon hearing this, Maurice states that Gaston will never marry his daughter and the soldier punches him in the face. He then ties Maurice to a tree so that he will serve as food for the wolves. In this way, Gaston will have one less obstacle in his way, and Belle will have no one but him to protect her. LeFou tries to change his friend's mind, for he finds it too cruel to leave Maurice there in the forest to die. But in the end, he gives in to Gaston's wishes, as he always has. When he finds out that a lady is in the castle, Chip feels very excited and runs to tell his mother. The little teacup can't wait to pour her a cup of tea. Seeing the table set up for dinner for two, the beast is furious, as he did not know that Belle had been released from prison. Lumiere then explains that this may be the lady who will break the spell and manages to convince the prince to go to her room to invite her to dinner. At that moment, Belle is getting ready to flee. Upon receiving the invitation, she becomes furious and states that she would never go to dinner with the person who took away her freedom. Angered, the beast states that if Belle doesn't want to keep him company, she won't get any dinner. The creature goes to his room and uses the magic mirror to see the girl. The petals of his rose keep falling, and with each passing day his doom draws nearer. Hours later, Mrs. Potts appears in, seeing the rope made of cloth, asks the young woman to have a cup of tea before she leaves. She then invites her into the dining room while everyone works in the kitchen to provide the best experience for her guest. Cogsworth is afraid that his master will find out what they are doing, but Lumiere assures him that if this happens, he will take full responsibility. He asks the maestro Cadenza to ease up the mood with some music. While dinner is being served, Lumiere gives a beautiful concert. The chandelier has the help of plates and cutlery to make that moment even more special and make Belle feel at ease, as if it were her home. Mrs. Potts is responsible for taking care of the tea and dessert, 
But the truth is that Belle is not even interested in the food. She can't take her eyes off the presentation of those magical artifacts and feels as if she is in a real fairy tale. However, as dinner comes to an end, while walking back to her room, Belle remembers that she is there as a prisoner and decides to go investigate what is in the West Wing, because she knew that the clock was lying when it said that place is just the warehouse. After climbing several flights of stairs, the young woman opens the door and is faced with a scratched up painting. While walking through the place, she spots something that catches her attention. A beautiful rose was floating and covered by a glass container. Before the young girl can touch the object, the beast appears, totally in a rage. The creature orders Belle to leave and, frightened, the girl runs away. Lumiere and Cogsworth realize that the young woman is trying to escape and order them to lock the gates. Then, Belle manages to get out through the small door that Sultan usually passes through. She catches Philippe and flees through the forest. At that moment, they begin to be chased by the wolves, who soon manage to surround them. The girl takes a piece of wood to defend herself and attacks the animals that try to devour her horse. However, the creatures manage to get rid of the piece of wood she was holding and Belle is left defenseless. Just as she was about to be devoured, the beast appears and attacks the wolves. After taking several bites, the prince manages to chase the animals away with his roar and falls unconscious to the ground. Belle thinks of taking this moment to run away, but changes her mind and decides to help the monster who has just saved her. The young woman takes Adam back to the castle and tends to his injuries. His servants were very worried about him and Belle asks why they cared about someone so cruel. Mrs. Potts then tells that when his mother died, the prince was a sweet child. After that, his father transformed him to look just like him. In the days following the attack, Belle continued to care for the beast. A few times a day, the young girl read to him and discovered that that dark monster also loves Shakespeare. He takes the girl to the castle library and she is amazed, because she has never seen so many books in her life. That day, they have lunch together and Belle can't leave her book even while eating. Later, the pair walk around the castle and talk about the new story the young girl is reading. She then introduces Philippe to the beast and is happy to see them getting along together. Belle throws a snowball at the prince and is surprised when the creature plays along and attacks her back. During dinner, the beast sits down next to the girl to drink his soup. Seeing the couple in the library getting along so well, the flame of hope rekindles in the servants' hearts and they strongly believe that they can become human again. The next morning, while the beast is reading outside the castle, Belle approaches him and thanks him for saving her life when the wolves attacked her. After hearing this, Adam says that he needs to show her something. In the library, there is a magic book that allows the user to go wherever he wants. The young girl puts her hand on the book and mentalizes the place where she has always wanted to go. In this way, they are transported to Paris, in the attic where Belle lived with her parents when she was born. There, she finds a small rose-shaped pen. The beast asks what happened to the young girl's mother, but Belle says that her father never wanted to tell her that story. The prince then finds a doctor's mask and soon realizes that the woman died during the Black Plague. To prevent Belle from also being contaminated by the disease, her mother asked the girl's father to take her away. After hours of being tied to a tree, Maurice is saved by Agatha, a homeless woman, who takes him in and gives him some tea. When he recovers, he returns to his village and tells the people in the bar what happened in the forest. Minutes later, Gaston and LeFou appear and are confronted by the villagers. Immediately, the soldier denies the charges and one of the customers asks if Maurice has any proof of what he just said. The man claims that Agatha knows the truth, because she is the one who rescued him. Gaston then begins to mock him and claims that the testimony of a beggar woman is worthless. Maurice tells him that LeFou was also there and knows what happened, but Gaston intimidates him and the man feels obliged to support him. Once again, Gaston states that Maurice is not right in the head and says that he needs to be taken somewhere where he can be treated. In the castle, the servants help their master prepare for the ball that will take place that night. The prince is anxious and gets even more nervous when he looks at the result in the mirror. However, before he goes to the ballroom, his servants manage to fix that disaster. Belle is also in her room finishing getting ready. Madame Garderobe puts the finishing touches on her dress. When they meet, the couple go down the stairs together and walk to the center of the hall, where they begin to dance to the sounds of Maestro Cadenza and Mrs. Potts. Minutes later, they go to the balcony and the beast reveals that he hasn't danced in years. The monster asks if Belle believes that she could ever be happy with him living in that castle, so the young girl states that no one is able to be happy unless they have their freedom. She tells him that it was her father who taught her to dance and says that she misses him very much. The prince then takes her to his room and gives her the magic mirror so that Belle can see her father. The girl is distraught to discover that the person she loves most in the world is in trouble, and the beast asks her to go after him. The creature returns her freedom and asks Belle to go save her father. 
Before the young woman leaves, he gives the mirror to her, so Belle can see him when she misses him. Unable to believe what is happening, the girl goes downstairs and returns home. Although they are very sad, since there is now no hope of the curse being broken, the servants understand their master's decision. The prince loved that girl, so he could not force her to stay in the castle, especially under those conditions. Hours later, Belle and Philippe arrive at her village and the girl orders the villagers to free her father, who was about to be taken to the asylum. Gaston then says that Maurice is confused and making up stories about a monster living in a castle. To prove that her father is not crazy, Belle uses the magic mirror to show the beast and prove that he exists. At that moment, Gaston takes the mirror from her hands and summons everyone in the village to go hunt down the creature. However, Belle claims that despite his appearance, the beast is kind and gentle. Upon hearing this, Gaston claims that the young woman has been bewitched and asks the guards to arrest her along with her father. The former soldier commands an army on its way to the castle in order to eliminate that monster. The villagers fill themselves with weapons before entering the forest, and LeFou begins to worry that the monster is not actually the one in the castle, but his friend Gaston. That night, the servants hear horse noises and run to the window, hoping that Belle is returning to the palace. Instead, however, what they see are armed intruders approaching. Bravely, the magical creatures form a barricade in front of the door to try to prevent them from entering. When he realizes that the enemies are too numerous and will manage to knock down the gate, Lumiere has an idea. All the furniture is placed in their proper places and wait for the invaders to enter. When they encounter that palace, many find the place familiar and have the impression that they have been there before. Suddenly, the magical objects reveal themselves and begin to attack them. After being struck by the wooden rack and knocked down by the piano, LeFou asks Gaston to help him up, but Gaston refuses to help him and goes after the beast. During the time she is trapped in the wagon with her father, Belle reveals that Adam freed her so that she could save him. Maurice doesn't understand how this can be possible and the girl hands him the rose-shaped pen. Belle tells him that the beast took her to Paris, where she discovered what happened to her mother. The man asks her forgiveness for hiding the truth for so long, and the girl thanks him for saving her life. Now, she needs her father's help to open the lock and manage to escape to help the beast. Within minutes, the inventor manages to unlock it, and Belle catches a ride with Philippe back to the gloomy castle. Meanwhile, in the palace, the battle continues. When three musketeers approach Cogsworth to attack him, Madame Garderobe slips in front and uses all her talent to dress them up. Mrs. Potts pours boiling water on the invaders, and Cadenza uses his piano teeth to attack them. Lumiere then sets off some bombs and sends the peasants running. In the midst of this confusion, Agatha goes up the stairs toward the prince's chambers. Just then, Belle arrives at the castle and Gaston finally meets the beast. The monster has no fear of dying, because now that the only girl he has ever loved is gone, Adam has no desire to go on living. The creature remains indifferent as Gaston shoots it in the back. At that instant, the prince falls from the tower and clings to the roof. Suddenly, Belle appears and tries to stop Gaston from eliminating the beast. She knocks the soldier's gun to the ground and he comes down the tower stairs to get her. Seeing that his beloved has come back for him, the monster has his strength renewed and tries to reach the girl. However, before he could approach her, Gaston appears and continues to attack him. To defend himself, the beast grabs the man by the neck and threatens to throw him off the tower. Gaston begs the monster to not let him go and begs him to let him live. Then, the creature remembers the mistakes it has made in the past and decides to do differently this time. Despite his hatred for that man, the prince decides to let him live and orders him to leave the castle. Adam then jumps into the tower where Belle is and ends up being shot in the back. There is not an ounce of kindness in Gaston's heart and the man remains determined to eliminate the creature that has shown him mercy. Belle tries to help the beast to his feet, but Adam is shot for the third time and loses completely his strength. Just then, the bridge where Gaston is standing begins to collapse and the man falls from a gigantic height. Before he dies, the monster thanks Belle for coming back and laments that this is his time to go. At that moment, the last petal of the enchanted rose falls, and the spell is perpetuated. The servants begin to say goodbye to each other, for now each of them will become just an inanimate object like any other. While crying over the prince's death and begging him not to leave her, Belle claims that she loves him. Agatha is close by and hears this declaration. In the end, the beast has managed to find love, despite his appearance. Then, the sorceress, who has been disguised as a beggar all this time, fulfills her part of the bargain and removes the curse she has put on everyone in that castle. The beast comes back to life and regains his true body. Thus, the couple can have their first kiss while the entire surrounding castle is rebuilt. Sultan becomes a dog again, and all the servants become human again. Madame Garderobe and Maestro Cadenza finally get to be together again, 
and so do Lumiere and Plumet. Chip becomes a boy again, and Mrs. Potts feels extremely happy to have her son by her side. The villagers, who have been condemned to forget everyone who lived in the castle, recover their memories and the families can be together again. To celebrate the end of the curse, the prince and his princess throw a ball in their castle, to which all the residents of the kingdom are invited. So what did you think of this movie? Leave it in the comments below. And if you liked the video, please like and subscribe for more movie recaps. See you next time.